there with a true heart. That comes from the book of Hebrews. And it made me think about a, a time in my own life. Uh, it's been a few years ago. I, for a few weeks, I was getting um, indigestion, getting very, very strong indigestion. And uh, I was doing some work in the yard, some heavy lifting. And, and I, I remember thinking, if this gets any worse, I'm just going to explode. And uh, so I called uh, a line that, where you talk to a doctor, and they said, well, you need to go to an emergency room. So I drove to an emergency room. And, uh, the doctor took a blood sample, looked at me, and came back, and he began to talk to me about heart disease. Well, I don't have heart disease. What, what's he, he must have the wrong patient. Um, but it was me. In fact, they put me in an ambulance and sent me off to the hospital, and I didn't come home until I had bypass surgery because I didn't have a true heart. I thought I did. I just thought I had indigestion. And when, when we look at this scripture, we're not talking about our physical heart, of course. Let us draw near with a, with a true heart. We're talking about our soul, about our relationship with the Lord. And you know, it's real easy to think you're all right with the Lord until the Lord takes a look at your heart and tells you, no, there's a, there's a problem there. And the way he does that is through the Bible. God wrote it down so we could know. It's not just my opinion or your opinion. It's not how we feel about it. It's what God has, has said. And when he, he wrote that verse, it goes on and says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. See, that's the way we can know we have a true heart, is by faith. There, one of my favorite verses is Romans 10:17, where it says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. See, the way you know what faith is, Faith is not just believing something. Faith is believing God. When, when the Bible is talking about faith, it's talking about believing God. And the way we know what God, what we should believe about God is God has shown us. He's revealed it to us. Uh, faith comes by hearing. And that, that passage that I'm reading there in, in Hebrews is a whole section where it talks about things that won't save you. He talks about uh, it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. You know, sacrifices, blood sacrifices won't take away our sin. The law won't take away our sin. But the, the verse that just before it says, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. See, it's by the blood of Jesus. Jesus is the way. In fact, later on, he, he uses this these words. He says, having boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Christ is the door to God. God became a man so that we could know him. And you know, we might think our heart is right. Most people, when I ask them, if I ask people, if you died, would you go to heaven? The most common answer, almost, almost universally, people say, yeah, I think I would. I've been pretty good. I've asked drug addicts, I've asked prostitutes, I've asked people in prison, I've, you know, I've asked nice people, you know, but we're all the same, aren't we? We all think we're pretty good, it's all these other people that are the problem. But when God looks at our heart, He says, you have a heart problem. It's our heart. It's our rebellious heart. And we have to humble ourselves before the Lord. You see, God doesn't just say to draw near, He says to draw near with a true heart. And the only way to have a true heart is by faith, in full assurance of faith. You know, when Jesus was on the earth, there was lots of people that came to him. Some of them came to him earnestly and sincerely. As you read the Gospels, you'll see uh, there were people who said, Oh, Jesus, help me. And, and they were very sincere. But you know, there were others. For instance, in Matthew 19, it says the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him. They came to trick him. They weren't sincere. And, and Jesus later said to them, Because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. It didn't matter what Jesus said to them. They weren't going to believe him because it interfered with what they thought was right. The Bible says we, we, come in, we need to come in full assurance of faith. And that's God's way. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. Faith is going God's way. And the Bible says we're sinners. And for us to be to have access to God, our sin needs to be dealt with. In fact, that's the end of that verse. I haven't read you the whole verse even. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, 
having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That cleansing is not something we can do ourselves. It's not something a church can do for us. It's not something a ceremony can do. Uh, Like I read in verse 10, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. It applies to everyone. He only did it once. Jesus is not going to die again for us. He died once, and it was enough. That's why on the cross he was able to say, it's finished. And he went back to heaven. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God because the work is done. And now it's up to us to let God change our hearts. We need to draw near with true hearts in full assurance of faith. God is the one who can wash us clean. Uh, Let me ask you this. Have you come to God with a true heart? Uh, When I read that verse, uh, when he says we're sanctified through the body of Jesus Christ, that word sanctified means made clean. We're made clean by the blood of Christ. No one can be good enough to go to heaven. It's just the way it is. We're born sinners. We don't have to teach Angus how to sin, do we? He's already giving you a hard time, you know? Three months old. We're just born that way. And God can change us. God can cleanse us and help us. Let let me tell you two other things and I'll be done. He says, first of all, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance. Then the next verse says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. God wants us to hold fast to him. And the key is, he's faithful. You you can put faith in something that's not faithful. You ever sat on a chair and it gave way, or trusted a person and they betrayed you? Uh, But God is faithful. In fact, the Bible says God cannot lie. God is faithful. And and the key uh, to faith is who you're trusting. I remember uh, hearing many years ago of a a man who was billed as Spider-Man. He used to climb up buildings with no no help. But one day he fell and was killed. And when they looked, in his hand was spider webs. He had hit a place where he thought it was concrete, but the spiders had made their webs and the dust had covered it and the, the grime and so on, and his faith was misplaced. Listen, that's not God. God is true. God is right. He is faithful that promised I love the picture in Hebrews 6 where he says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. He says, where the forerunner, uh, which entered into that within the veil where the forerunner is for us entered. Now the picture I see is that God has taken the anchor of our soul and driven it into heaven. You know, God, Jesus, has taken care of, of, our, of our eternity, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. And it's in Jesus Christ. That's the place where it says, it is impossible for God to lie. And our hope can be in Him. So he says, first of all, let us draw near with a true heart. Then he says, let us hold fast. Trust the Lord. And then the third one, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Let's consider one another. See, when you draw near to God in faith, God gives you His love. And God changes you. He makes you able to love others. And He makes you want to have a relationship not only with Him, but with His other children. These are are three statements that are God's basic plan for life. They're faith, hope, and love. Man, if you've got those three, you've got everything. But it starts with faith. It starts with faith. I want to encourage you tonight. uh, Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. He's trustworthy. Changed my life. And over the centuries, thousands have come to Him and no one's ever been disappointed. There's no disappointment in Jesus. Uh, It starts with faith. And that's why Jesus came. One of the verses we read often at Christmas is as the, uh, the angel spoke to Joseph, it said, Thou shalt call His name Jesus, for He shall save His people from their sins. Jesus is the Savior. That's why He came. To die for your sins and my sins. Uh, Draw near with a true heart. Uh, Don't be mistaken about your heart. Uh, Don't wait till you stand before God and find out, oh, I had a bad heart. God says we all, you know, one of those verses we read tonight, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That's God saying that. He made your heart. He knows it. 
The thing that amazes me about God is He knows everything I think and do, and He still loves me. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Uh, God knows you, and He loves you. Uh, draw near with a true heart. Uh, we're going to end this with uh, O Come All Ye Faithful. It's number five in your songbook there. And I want to start with the chorus. Oh, come let us adore Him. That's what we're talking about here. Let us draw near with a, with a true heart. Just start on that chorus there. Oh, come let us adore Him. Then we'll sing a couple of the verses. Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him. Him Christ the Lord. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold Him, born the King of angels. Come, let us adore Him. Come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Sing that third verse. Yea, Lord, we greet Thee, born this happy morning, Jesus to Great evening, and uh, when we say keep your spoon, that means there's there's more to come. Um, for for some, the best part of the evening will be we're going to have dessert next, and uh, th that'll be a blessing. I'm glad you came. We have several visitors. Thank you for coming. I hope you'll come uh, this uh, to church on Sunday. We'd we'd love to have you any any time. Uh, but uh, just to be a little bit more fair, we're going to let this table go first for dessert. All right. <laughs>